To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions, episode 22, Isaac versus the Philistines. The book of Genesis doesn't spend a lot of time telling us about the non-Hebrew people of the Levant, but there is definitely enough in Genesis about the Philistines that is worth exploring. The Bible gets into a dispute between Yitzhak, the son of Abraham, and some unruly local Philistines. They bicker over whales and stature, which sheds some light on how the Hebrews who wrote and compiled Genesis viewed the people who inhabited the southwestern coast of their land and lived beside them until the 600s BCE, when they were, like the Hebrews, exiled by the Babylonians. We know very little about the Philistines up to their exile, and we know nothing about them from that point on, mostly because they didn't have a book. The Hebrews did have a book and the Philistines make a guest appearance in Genesis chapter 26. And we can only imagine how they would tell their own story. So let's dive in. Hi, Omri. Hi, Gil. And we want to give a shout out this week to Dan Mosquida, uh, a new member of the show. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. For supporting our project. So what do you make of those <laughs> Philistines in this chapter specifically? Because they because they come back later in the book, yeah, and we'll save that for the, for them. In this chapter, they are more of a nuisance <laughs> than like a major national threat. First, they just cover the wells, which is pretty important because covering the wells is not just only That's uncool. <laughs> it's not only very rude. <laughs> uh, it's also uh, blocking a central life hub. Right, social hub. Yeah, not only social hub, but as our former prime minister liked to, to say, that the life itself. You know, <laughs> you need to drink in order to live, and it's very hot here. Yeah, and whenever there's a well, there's life, sort of. Where there's a will, there's a well, and life, and life. Boom, okay. copyright. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not only rude; it's very dangerous. To yeah. it's 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 has an extra layer an extra symbolic meaning to cover a well okay so let's go through mm. what happens first in general so it's hack he's walking around he has his as you do as you do when you're a patriarch, a patriarch yeah. he's also a farmer which is new and then he digs up some well and when i'm saying and when i say that he digs up some well basically he tells his slaves to dig up some wells yeah yeah, yeah. that's that's for sure that's for sure and then it mentions that the Philistines, by, you said, covered the well, but basically destroyed the well. Destroyed the well, Just yeah. like uh, blocked them. Yeah. Which is like, why? Cover it with sand. With sand. Like, yeah. why would you do that? So you're not even using the water yourself. It's like nobody will get. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very aggressive. So he re and re irrational. And irrational. Or maybe they just want you to go away. And just like you can't live here, we'll block your wells. Maybe it's some irrationality that you attribute to an other. Yeah. So they are barbarians. They cover wow. the wells. Cover the wells. That's yeah. Uh, yeah. That's barbaric. Yeah. That's barbaric. It's anti civilization, yeah. human, everything. It's against yeah. polite society. It's against polite society. You cover the wells. So he redigs the wells. But then the Philistines, and here we will make a distinction between their local king. Avimelech and the people, then uh, they come back and now they want the water that he redug. So Isaac is like, okay, whatever, I'm gonna go someplace else and dig some other wells. And then they come back and they want these wells as yeah. well. So there's a problem. And he only and and it says that they are envious of him, which is why he has to leave. Mm -hmm. And he but their king. He's pretty cool. Yeah, that's, there's kind of an uh, ambivalent feeling toward the Philistines and their first appearance in the Bible. It's almost like it's kind of, a, if, we, if we said that uh, Isaac is like the second season that was written by uh, the marketing guys, <laughs> rewritten by the marketing guys, some of the writers slipped in some ambivalence <laughs> and nuance uh, into the the other the the bad guys basically the non-hebrews the heathens or whatever uh, and that guy is avimelech which we remember him him or his father uh, who made a deal with, uh, abraham, with a abraham a pact 
Yeah. So and, and he didn't want to take Abraham's wife. He took her only because he thought that uh, she was his sister. So even like later theologians, they also had an ambivalent uh, take on him. The whole uh, sister-wife exchanging thing. Apparently, this is a reference that the people listening and reading the story at the time, they knew. It was yeah, it's a, a cultural signifier. It's a cultural signifier. It's an Assyrian law that was found. Some of the inscription is like tab. It's like tablet A number twenty-two. If a man, other than a father, brother, or son, has caused a married woman to go on a business trip with him, as long as he did not know that she was married, he is to swear to this effect and pay two talents of lead to the hus- to the husband. Mm. Exactly this story, occurring story. No, I didn't know mm-hmm. that she was uh, your wife. She I actually didn't know. If he did know that she was married, he is to pay this fine and swear, I swear that we did not have sex. Here in the story, it's mentioned, Avimelech, when yeah. he looks at the window and yeah. he sees uh, Yitzchak metzachek with uh, Rivka, yeah. like something sexual, funny, playful. And playful, then he says, oh, the people here almost slept with your wife. And then we would have had a problem with the yeah. Assyrian law of... So it's very interesting. Not the Syrian law, but uh, Yahweh's law or God's law. Yeah. So, but it, it, yeah, 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 for them. It's interesting Assyrian Syrian how law also, when they read in laws, they thought it was divine laws. It's not a yeah. secular it, yeah. the, the separation of church and state, you know. <laughs> and also it's not like uh, Avimelech is saying, you know, if someone would have slept with your wife and broken the Assyrian law, so the Assyrian king would yeah. send his minions here and take me to jail. And yeah. no, it's nothing like that. It's just so because they didn't rule over that land. It goes to show the power of empire and yeah. project the laws mm-hmm. outside. And these two little people, they're like, okay, we're gonna go with what those big guys back east do. This, and uh, another yeah. thing about laws that laws are rarely written out of somebody's ass they are a reaction yes. to some social problem yes. w- which has two sides or several sides yes. quarrel- quarreling yes so the fact that they, they needed to settle that issue <laughs> tells <laughs> us that it was very common thing you know you go with your wife to a business trip it creates problems <laughs> <laughs> And also, the uh, he's the king of Gerar. 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 It can well maybe... <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, it, uh, 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 the sound uh, 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 If you add a little bit of rolling R, yeah. uh, it can sound almost like a G. That's yeah. why... Raza. 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 Gaza. Yeah. You know? It's just like a little... Like, just if you put it a little bit further, like closer to your lips. Ah, uh, go. Yeah, it's a great way to get cancer of the throat. <laughs> uh, it would be very annoying <laughs> at dinner parties. <laughs> I, I can see why they just... Okay, let's just call it Gaza. <laughs> Whatever, okay. <laughs> uh, where was I? <laughs> Graal. Yeah, so it can be Graal, Geral. Okay, it's so not a major city, mm-hmm. and it's almost outside of what scholars believe to be their territory, the, the, the Philistines' th- territory which is what we call the Shvela, it's like the coastal area of the Levant from Gaza, which was a Egyptian stronghold way back, uh, up to in their epics, up to Akko, which is uh, pretty north. Yeah, but, like the, but, but mostly like most of the part was from Gaza to Jaffa. Yes. Jaffa, which is the, sur- the southern part of now Tel Aviv, Yafo, Tel Aviv, Jaffa. Yeah. It's Where do you live, Omri? I live in Jaffa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay, but let's talk a little bit about that later. First, I want to focus on the biblical story. The, the sense here that the Philistines are an enemy and they are more of a nuisance because yes. the time period that the writers and the listeners are imagining right now when they are hearing this story is closer to the lives of Ab- Abraham. So for them, if a uh, seventh century bc he hears that story for him it take it takes place 1000 2000 years yes. ago so he's not really imagining he or she is not imagining numbers or they, they're imagining many 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 seasons vast number of seasons more than a thousand mm. and later scholars and uh, biblical believers that are also scholars 
who dated Christian mostly dated they date this episode yeah for about uh, 200 uh, 2100 BC, BC. yeah something, something like around that. there so in the years of uh, in the years of Sargon of Akkad or so so basically it's mega anachronistic they're trying to extrapolate from the Philistines that they see around them as they're imagining their own Hebrew past okay so what were we like a thousand years ago yeah so let's imagine what were the Philistines a thousand years ago so what were the Philistines a thousand years before they didn't exist yeah <laughs> they weren't there yeah they only came in the 1200s uh, yeah. BCE yeah and we know that through genetics and you know pottery and architecture so this is several several different sources yeah yeah li like there's an Egyptian pharaoh that mentions the Philistines at the first mention of the Philistines in the, the 1250 BC something of the sort and the first mention of yeah. the Israelites is like a hundred years earlier yeah Ramses the third which uh, the great battle at the Nile Delta uh, between his armies and uh, the sea people which one of them was the Peleset, the Philistines, there's a huge, uh, how do you call it, painting, <laughs> whatever, huge, uh, on the wall, like on a, a wall, yeah, facade, they call it, I don't know the archaeological name of okay. it, it's like a, a large ancient painting that uh, depicts that scene, uh, amazing painting, and the Philistines, the war between the, the, the sea people, which one of them was the Philistines, Peleset, against the Egyptian armies was so draining, on both sides that it could have been that they made a deal and then he just like bragged and he settled he settled them in Gaza which was a uh, Egyptian city that mm. was uh, somewhat abandoned or somewhat uh, beyond its its glory because the, yeah because the Egyptian kingdom was in decline so so if you imagine their history you said that their stories and their identity has been lost has been lost in time because they didn't write in a phonetic yes. way understanding way they didn't have a book they didn't yeah. have so, a codex yeah. so we have like a like a vase and like uh what was a house yeah and we have uh, graves we have a way to understand their material possessions and extrapolate through that yes maybe rituals that they they did but we have no idea if what story they yes. told themselves and if we can imagine their story it's not that different from the hebrew story how so the land that they are li inhabiting now it's kind of a promised land because the sea people we must uh, remember who are the sea people the okay. sea people are uh, marauding raiding <laughs> uh, tribes of violent people that's according to uh, contemporary sources of that time yes and they came from uh, greece the greek and islands and, and the Aegean sea, Aegean sea and maybe, yeah, yeah maybe the adriatic sea whatever some, yeah. something like that yeah this is the Bronze Age collapse that we're talking about. They were a, uh, either a factor in the Bronze Age collapse or a product yes. of the five, four major empires yes. that controlled yes. that area that had vast economic and cultural uh, connections. Yes. The sea path throughout the Mediterranean Sea, it was a highway yeah, sort of. Especially the eastern side. Yeah. So okay, just to that point, so they either were a part of causing the Bronze Age collapse because of their marauding or they had to leave where they were living and look for someplace else because everything was collapsing. Yeah, I, 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 th I imagine it more as the latter. I think, it, yeah, I think it's not an either or. Yeah, it's not an either or because it's a kind of a process that a lot of factors predate the actual date. So uh, you can uh, trace back the nascent of the Bronze Age collapse 200, 300 years before the date itself of its collapse. So if you look at this, the society that had been collapsed and the fact that the sea people were such a major or at least in the perception, a major part yeah, of that. That's how the contemporary people called those people coming yeah. over, the, over the sea uh, to attack them. So if you had a, a culture that was based on the production uh, of grain and bronze and vast highways of trade connections, the most prominent people in this society was people who can handle ships, who, let's say, let's say got hired, maybe. Mm. Probably low-class people, a lot of them sailors, that uh, devoted their lives mm. to the sea. And when society collapsed... It's like what's going on now with the Africans going the other way, north, across the Mediterranean, to escape uh, what's going on there. Oh, no. Or it's like, if you imagine Iraq as like a functioning, modern-day Iraq before the invasion, as like a functioning 
kingdom and then the Americans disbanded their army, you have a lot of professionals, yes. sort of, violent professionals, who are out of, the jo- out yeah. of jobs. Yeah. So they become marauders, raiders, mm, right. also because they, uh, they react to a society being collapsed. So I imagine more like they were prominent in the f- destruction of the cities and the, the raids and the mass slaughters and all of that, but... I imagine it more as a reaction to already collapsing society. To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms.